Welcome, I'm Raul Lowry Contreras, and this is the Contreras Report International Edition for July 29th, 2021. Should Americans tolerate foreign agents illegally influencing American policy and attempting to steal hundreds of millions of U.S. taxpayer dollars? I think not. Breaking two decades of a reasonable approach to dealing with the strategic South Caucasus region, a slim Democratic Party majority of the United States House of Representatives passed an amendment this Wednesday, July 28th, at the behest of America's number one fifth column, the Armenian National Committee of America, ENCA. The House approved the so-called Pallone Amendment, restricting U.S. foreign military financing and training assistance to Azerbaijan. The amendment was introduced by Congressman Frank Pallone of New Jersey, who is the Congressional Armenian Caucus co-chair and one of the key promoters of Armenian special interests on Capitol Hill. Though the amendment does not block discretionary military equipment, which may be transferred by the Department of Defense, its passage is an affront to U.S. national interests in one of the world's most strategic regions. America's interests are not well served by the House succumbing to the anti-American demands by Armenian special interests. In 1992, at the behest of the same special interests and despite objections by Papa Bush, by his administration, the U.S. Congress passed the infamous Section 907 of the Freedom Support Act banning all U.S. government aid to Azerbaijan. Thus, Azerbaijan was singled out of all 15 Soviet countries and deprived of American assistance in the most difficult years of its early independence. And this happened when Azerbaijan's territory was being invaded and ethnically cleansed by neighboring Armenia. However, thanks to our, the Armenian special interests who gave large campaign donations to their senators and congresspeople, the Congress decided to reward the aggressor and punish the victim of aggression. In 2001, after Azerbaijan became one of the closest U.S. allies in the fight against international terrorism, the Congress passed a law authorizing the president to annually waive the Section 907 and offer government assistance to Azerbaijan as needed. Thus, since 2002, every U.S. president has waived Section 907. The latest waiver was issued by the Biden administration in April of this year, 2021. When President Biden renewed the waiver, Armenian lobby, ANCA, was quite upset. So they tried to reinstate the waiver through their men in Congress, hence the Pallone Amendment. So Armenian special interests demand zero aid to Azerbaijan and 100 million U.S. taxpayers dollars for Armenia, as well as ethnic Armenians in Azerbaijan's Karabakh region. Initially, they demanded $250 million of American taxpayer money for a small Armenia. Seeing the ridiculousness of this figure, the lobby graciously agreed to lower it to 100 million. The Biden administration suggested in March only $24 million in aid for Armenia and zero for ethnic Armenians in Karabakh. The pro-Armenian congresspersons were able to double that figure to $50 million for Armenia in the fiscal year 2022 foreign aid bill and added $2 million more for demining activities in Nagorno-Karabakh. Despite being passed in the House, I expect the U.S. Senate, in its wisdom, to reject this bill. The bill must first secure 60 votes unless its submission is under a budget reconciliation bill where only 50 votes plus the vice president's support can pass it. Then there is the potential of a veto by President Biden, whose judgment is being challenged by the pro-Russian, anti-American ANCA and the gaggle of congressmen it contributes hundreds of thousands of dollars to at campaign time. Before the Senate considers the bill that will defeat President Biden's decision, that will change his decision, it must be reminded that Armenia has been declared by the European Court of Human Rights the aggressor of the long war to conquer and occupy territory of Azerbaijan. Armenia serves as home to 5,000 Russian soldiers, which is one of the largest Russian army bases in the world. Armenia's borders are guarded by Russians. 
Armenia demanded that ally Russia intervene with troops against Azerbaijan in the 44-day war that ended on November 10 last year. Armenia helped Iran circumvent American and international sanctions. Armenia laundered money through Armenian banks for illegal transactions by Iran. Armenia transferred weapons to Iran, which were later used in Iraq to kill and wound American troops. In a return quid pro quo, Iran allowed Russian planes to fly through Iranian airspace with weapons Armenia used to fight Azerbaijan's forces in the war that ended in November. Lastly, Americans should know that Armenian supporters in Congress have orchestrated over three billion dollars worth of aid to Armenia since 1992. That's billion with a B. That makes Armenia one of the largest recipients of U.S. aid in the world since 1992. During that time, Armenia's population has shrunk miserably to less than 2.5 million people. Armenians have left Armenia for Russia and Los Angeles. The only reason American taxpayers have been so ripped off since 1992 is that the Armenian lobby, led by Anka, has thrown millions of dollars at mostly Democrat Congress people to fatten their campaign accounts. Anka brags that it generated 100,000 letters in recent days to House members and senators making its demands. It did all this to influence Congress to change U.S. policy in the Caucasus region, a 20-year-old policy of working with Azerbaijan, a reliable partner in energy security and in the fight against international terrorism, and is the only country in the world that borders both Russia and Iran. Tough neighborhood. To influence American government and its policies, any group that represents the policies and views of a foreign government, in this case of Armenia and Russia, that group must register as a foreign agent as per federal law. Is ANCA that generated 100,000 letters to U.S. Congress people and lobbies the State Department and the White House to change U.S. policy, is it registered as a foreign agent? No. Should they be? Yes. As long as President Biden's Department of Justice is arresting a Los Angeles lawyer for representing an Arab country without being registered, and the previous presidency's Department of Justice prosecuted a retired army general for representing Turkey without being registered, the Department of Justice should arrest every single employee of ANCA and charge them with the crime of illegally influencing American policy and attempting to hijack millions of U.S. taxpayer dollars. If you haven't subscribed to the Contreras Report, you should do so because you will be notified whenever we make a new post. Also, if you'd like to write a letter with a comment or a question, the email address will appear on your screen in a few seconds. So please write us, but more importantly, watch us and tell your friends about us. Thank you again for being there. This is the Contreras Report. I'm Raul Lowry Contreras. See you next time.